take place to begin its descent toward the Kennedy Space Center for the first of two opportunities available for a landing in Florida by the shuttle today. Here in Mission Control, flight controllers are getting final updates on the weather and an uh, update on observations of approaches uh, to the runway uh, from Chief Astronaut Kent Rominger, who's been flying the shuttle training aircraft uh, at the Kennedy Space Center, flying practice approaches uh, to the shuttle runway. Of concern uh, during the morning has been fog uh, that uh, has been shown to dissipate uh, around Kennedy. Uh, whether or not that is dissipating quickly enough uh, is the question that flight controllers are getting updates on. Also, uh, continuing to evaluate uh, which runway would be chosen uh, for Columbia's descent, uh, runway 33 end of the shuttle landing facility or runway 15. This is a live view of the shuttle runway as seen uh, from a camera atop the vehicle assembly building at the Kennedy Space Center. The Space Shuttle Columbia at present 171 miles above the southern tip of Africa, 16 minutes away from an engine firing that would begin its trip home after 16 days of around-the-clock science in orbit.
This is Mission Control Houston, 174 miles above the Indian Ocean, just off the east coast of Africa. Columbia is in the proper orientation for a firing by its twin orbital maneuvering system engines. It would begin its descent from orbit, a return to Florida this morning. That would be a two minute, 38 second long firing of its orbital maneuvering system engines to begin that descent. On board, uh, the crew has completed uh, preparations uh, for landing, all of that to going like clockwork uh, throughout the morning, uh, closing up their science work uh, in the wee hours this morning, shutting the hatch to the space hab module that uh, was the center of most of the 80 scientific investigations conducted on board uh, at about 1 a.m. today, and uh, then uh, moving through all of their landing preparations uh, very smoothly. Flight controllers are currently monitoring the weather at uh, the Kennedy Space Center landing site, uh, specifically uh, fog that uh, has limited visibility but is uh, dissipating. Using uh, reports from the shuttle training aircraft that has been uh, flown on practice approaches to the runway by Chief Astronaut Kent Romanger, uh, satellite imagery, ground observations from weather observers, and uh, forecasts uh, from the Spaceflight Meteorology Group here in Houston at uh, Mission Control. All of that data being evaluated a final time, uh, standing by for a decision on whether Columbia will proceed or not with this engine firing about uh, 11 minutes away at 7.15 a.m. Central Time to lead to a touchdown in Florida at 8.16 a.m. Central. Again, a 2 minute 38 second long firing that would occur as Columbia is over the Indian Ocean, uh, just moving into evening to the west of Australia. It uh, would first encounter the effects of Earth's atmosphere uh, north of the Hawaiian Islands above the Pacific at an altitude of 75 statute miles and begin its descent into the atmosphere at that point, crossing uh, the continental United States above the coast of California, above the San Francisco Bay Area, and just to the south of Sacramento, providing persons in that area a uh, potentially spectacular view of the shuttle's descent through the atmosphere with superheated air, creating a plasma trail uh, from horizon to horizon for the shuttle. It would be visible in the Sacramento, San Francisco area first at about 5.51 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for about four minutes uh, crossing that area. Teeter's handover, and we'll get back to you on the other side. We copy, Houston. We haven't forgotten about you. Columbia would Appreciate continue it. across the uh, southwestern United States, uh, allowing a potential viewing from Las Vegas as well, uh, being visible there about 5.54 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for about two minutes at an elevation of about 22 degrees. In the Sacramento, Los, uh, San Francisco area, it would be at an elevation almost directly overhead of about 78 degrees. It uh, would also be visible from Flagstaff, Arizona, and uh, then from Albuquerque, New Mexico, just to the south of Albuquerque as it uh, moves towards sunrise and uh, Florida. At present, uh, Columbia is targeted toward runway 33 of the shuttle landing facility, that end of the shuttle landing facility runway, uh, to approach that runway, it would perform a right overhead 213 degree turn on its final approach to align with the runway. The runway selection continues to be evaluated based on weather conditions and the latest data here in Mission Control, that decision also pending for Columbia. So again, uh, less than 10 minutes now to an engine firing by Columbia to begin its descent, about 9 minutes away, that would occur at 7.15 a.m. for a touchdown at 8.16 a.m. Central Time at the Kennedy Space Center's runway, the first of two opportunities available for landing, weather being evaluated here in Mission Control, and a decision expected uh, very shortly. This is a live television view of the shuttle runway at the, the Kennedy Space Center from a camera atop the vehicle assembly building. The sun uh, well up at Kennedy as a fog continues to dissipate the vicinity. Evaluating the information is uh, Entry Flight Director Leroy Kane here in Mission Control, overseeing activities uh, for the descent of Columbia. Providing communications with Columbia is uh, astronaut to Charlie Hobaugh.
Flight Director uh, Leroy Kane discussing weather conditions at present uh, with forecasters here at Mission Control. Astronaut Charlie Hoboff passing along a go to Commander Rick Husband of Columbia and his crew of seven to come home this morning to the Kennedy Space Center at the first opportunity to fire Columbia's engines in under six minutes from now, about uh, five and a half minutes to begin its descent from orbit and an approach to the Kennedy Space Center that would have it touch down at the shuttle runway at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Flight controllers continue to evaluate which end of the runway Columbia will approach based on the uh, weather conditions. Uh, runway 15 or runway 33 as the ends are labeled. Both ends are acceptable at this point. It's just a matter of which one is the very best. Again, this engine firing will be a two minute, 38 second long firing of Columbia's twin orbital maneuvering system engines to begin its descent. We're ready for single APU start, attempt two. That uh, call from Columbia indicating that they're starting one of the three auxiliary power units on board the shuttle. Those are generators that supply power for the shuttle's hydraulic systems, which in turn are used to operate the elevons and rudder and speed brake, the aero surfaces of the shuttle. One of the three generators is started prior to this engine firing. The other two will be started after the engine firing is completed and uh, while Columbia is on its descent toward the atmosphere. Houston, we're about 30 seconds to a teeter's handover. We may have some ready comm on the next satellite. Okay, Houston, we copy.
about two and a half minutes away from an engine firing to begin Columbia's journey home to Florida this morning. Columbia moving into its final orbital sunset. It'll move into sunrise again as it descends through the atmosphere en route to Florida above the southwestern United States. Columbia is 176 miles above the Indian Ocean to the west of Australia, about 30 seconds away from the start of an engine firing to begin its descent toward Florida, completing 16 days of scientific work in orbit. This will be a 2 minute 38 second long firing of both orbital moving system engines for the shuttle, completing it on a course toward a touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center's shuttle runway at 8.16 a.m. Thanks. Watching over the operation of the orbital maneuvering system engines is uh, Propulsion Officer Dean Lenort reporting both firing now and uh, looking good. Two minutes and 38 seconds that both will fire to drop Columbia out of orbit put it on a course toward its first encounters with the atmosphere at an altitude of about 75 miles above the Pacific Ocean to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. Columbia's altitude at present 175 statute miles. A little over one and a half minutes left to go in the deorbit engine firing for Columbia, putting Columbia on course toward a touchdown in Florida at 8.16 a.m. Central Time today. About 20 seconds left in a deorbit engine firing for Columbia, beginning its descent to Earth.
Columbia, Houston, good burn, no trim required. We copy and concur, Houston, thanks. And we'll meet you in post burn. The guidance officer confirming that uh, Columbia is right on track uh, toward a landing at the Kennedy Space Center at 8.16 a.m. Central. Its first encounter with the atmosphere will come in about to 25 minutes as it uh, descends to an altitude of about 75 statute miles above the Pacific Ocean, north of the Hawaiian Islands. Its altitude at present, 176 statute miles. Several activities that will take place on board uh, for the crew, uh, they'll begin to power up the two remaining auxiliary power units. Uh, those are generators, uh, one of which was started prior to the engine firing uh, that supply power to the hydraulic systems on board that operate the shuttle's elevons, uh, rudder, and speed brake, its uh, aero surfaces. They'll also uh, begin uh, maneuvering the shuttle to the proper orientation for its first encounters with the atmosphere, that uh, with the nose angled up about 40 degrees and wings level to control heating on the spacecraft, uh, using the thermal tiles on the bottom of the spacecraft to control heating as it begins its initial descent into the upper extremes of Earth's atmosphere. As Columbia descends into the atmosphere and approaches uh, the continental United States, it'll begin a series of four steep banks that uh, it will follow through its approach all the way to the Kennedy Space Center. Those uh, perform to dissipate speed as it uh, descends and uh, air pressure builds. Also, uh, as it descends, its steering jets will control its orientation at first. Uh, they'll gradually be turned off, uh, turning control of the spacecraft uh, over to aero surfaces. Uh, as the shuttle transitions from spacecraft to aircraft, uh, its elevons and ailerons and rudder will become active. And we're ready for 303, Rick. Sand Houston, here comes the maneuver. We're ready for the maneuver and looking ahead. Secondary actuator check not required. I'll get you a time for your forward dump in a moment. Columbia beginning a maneuver uh, to position it uh, for its first encounter with the atmosphere. Secondary actuator check not required. And uh, we'll do the old get a little power down. We copy. The crew also began uh, dumping excess uh, reaction control system propellant from the forward reaction control system steering jets, uh, those by firing the jets uh, to dump that propellant uh, prior to, prior to uh, its encounter with the atmosphere. For Columbia's descent uh, on the flight deck at uh, the commander's seat, uh, Rick Husband, pilot uh, Willie McCool to his right, uh, in the center seat, uh, aft center seat of the flight deck is flight engineer Kapana Chavla. Seated on the flight deck uh, for landing as well is a mission specialist Laurel Clark. On the mid-deck, the lower deck of Columbia for landing, payload specialist Ilan Ramon of the Israel Space Agency, mission specialist uh, David Brown, and uh, Mike Anderson, payload commander. That to call that uh, the forward reactor control system jets will be fired for about 63 seconds to dump all excess propellant uh, from them before uh, encountering the atmosphere. Columbia's uh, descent toward Florida will take it across the uh, breadth of the continental United States. It'll cross the west coast of the United States above the San Francisco Bay Area of California, providing a spectacular sighting opportunity for persons in the uh, San Francisco and Sacramento, California Bay Area. For a uh, the San Francisco area, Columbia should first become visible about 5.51 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, be visible for about to four minutes from San Francisco and Sacramento, an elevation of about 78 degrees in the pre-dawn sky of California, uh, almost directly overhead of that area. It'll also be visible from Las Vegas as it continues its descent across the 
southwest United States uh, at an elevation of about 22 degrees from Las Vegas. Visible there about 5.54 to 5.56 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. A minute or so later, it will become visible from Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, moving to the south of Albuquerque and also uh, above Flagstaff, Arizona, just before that. It will move into sunrise as it uh, continues east across the United States uh, toward Florida. Headed toward a touchdown there at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Propulsion officer here reports that uh, dump of propellant through the forward reactor and control system jets on Columbia is in progress, uh, that uh, going as planned. The crew also soon will start uh, the two remaining auxiliary power units on board, those uh, two generators that will join a third that uh, was started prior to the engine firing that began the shuttle's descent to generate power for the shuttle's hydraulic systems during the entry and landing. About uh, 17 minutes away from Columbia's first encounters with the atmosphere, that occurring in an altitude of about 75 miles above the Pacific Ocean to the north of the Hawaiian Islands.
It's Mission Control Houston. Uh, Flight Dynamics Officer here in Mission Control, Richard Jones, uh, continuing to discuss uh, runway options and uh, approach for Columbia, uh, the best possible approach for the shuttle landing facility. Columbia currently targeted toward a landing on Kennedy Space Center runway 33, end of the shuttle landing facility runway. Uh, discussion uh, as to whether or not that, that may be switched to runway 15, uh, that uh, decision expected uh, as Columbia continues its descent. There's no issue with making that decision uh, as Columbia is descending. Uh, that's been done uh, during previous shuttle entries as well. The flight dynamics officer oversees uh, the trajectories of the shuttle and its uh, flight as it uh, enters the atmosphere and also uh, during launch. And we're ready, Willie. No deltas. Copy, no deltas. Columbia's altitude now 135 statute miles as it continues to descend toward the atmosphere above the Pacific Ocean. All activities are going smoothly on board. Columbia on track toward a touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center shuttle landing facility runway at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Evaluations are still ongoing of runway selection, which end of the runway Columbia will approach. Currently targeted for runway 33 there, however. With uh, Columbia on track for landing, we'll now go to the Kennedy Space Center for an update there on preparations to receive Columbia after its 16-day scientific journey. This is Kennedy Space Center shuttle ground operations. After a flawless 16 days in orbit for Columbia, all is in readiness for its return to the shuttle landing facility. On orbit 255, Columbia will be crossing the Florida Panhandle entering a portion of the Gulf of Mexico and then crossing the coastline once again near Crystal River, moving inland to Orlando and then proceeding eastward toward the Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral. Most of the final landing preparations were completed on Friday. All of the convoy vehicles and their support systems were turned on and checked out, and there was a thorough sweep of the runway to check for possible debris. That sweep was repeated again this morning. The landing team began arriving at 6 a.m. and had an initial tag up and landing status briefing at 6.45. All team members required to be at their assigned stations at the runway at 7.15. There was a final briefing by the convoy commander to the landing team at 7.45. The 20 landing convoy vehicles were deployed to the end of the runway at 8.15 this morning. The shuttle landing facility at KSC is 15,000 feet long and 300 feet wide, about a third longer and twice as wide as a runway at a major commercial international airport. It is located about three miles northwest of the Complex 39 Vehicle Assembly Building. STS-107 marks the 62nd landing of the Space Shuttle Orbiter at the KSC runway. Following landing and return to the hangar, Columbia will be deserviced and then processed for its next mission this fall. 
currently the weather observation at the shuttle landing facility has a temperature of 52 degrees with winds westerly at five knots the expected high during the day today on the runway while deservicing Columbia is underway is expected to be around 69 degrees with winds from the west northwest 12 to 18 knots astronaut Kent Rogemer accompanied by Educator astronaut Barbara Morgan began flying weather reconnaissance around the Cape Canaveral vicinity at 6.15 this morning and over the last hour and a half have been flying approaches to the runway in the shuttle training aircraft. Rominger is reporting his observations back to Houston to weather astronaut Dwayne Carey and to the NOAA National Weather Service Spaceflight Meteorology Group. The Milo tracking station at KSC will acquire Columbia about 13 minutes before landing and will begin supplying controllers in Houston with voice, data, and telemetry communications starting about a minute later. At 11 minutes before touchdown, the orbiter will begin receiving navigation signals from the TACAN, which is the homing beacon, and the navigation signal at the shuttle landing facility. As Columbia intercepts the heading alignment circle, the first video should become available and Columbia will cross directly overhead of the SLF, heading out over the Atlantic Ocean, making a gradual right turn toward a seven-mile final approach to runway 33, if that is the runway that is finally determined. That would be a southeast to northwest approach. Columbia's weight as it touches down on the runway will be 234,000 pounds. It will touch down at about 204 knots. After the orbiter's landing rollout is complete, there will then be the usual safety inspections, the so-called sniff checks to look for any toxic propellants, which may have leaked or be venting. And the astronauts will configure switches in the cockpit for post-landing activities and participate with the KSC ground operations team to safe the vehicle. When the vehicle is deemed safe, all of the potential hazards and determination is made that there are no toxic gases around the orbiter, the purge and coolant umbilical access vehicle will move into position at the rear of the orbiter. Here we see the shuttle training aircraft with Kent Rominger, accompanied by Barbara Morgan, making approaches to the runway, making a final assessment as to the landing conditions and the runway of choice. After the purge and cooling system connections, the crew transport vehicle will be moved into position adjacent to the orbiter access hatch on Columbia's point port side, and there will be a cursory inspection of the thermal protection system tiles, the wheels, and the other landing gear systems. About 45 minutes after landing, work will also begin to remove the orbiter's external tank separation camera. A physician will board Columbia shortly after the landing convoy arrives at Columbia's position on the runway. They will conduct a brief preliminary examination of the astronauts before the crew leaves the orbiter, and then the astronauts can make preparations to disembark and enter the crew transport vehicle for further medical evaluations. Because there are several medical test objectives for the crew this time, it will be longer than usual before the astronauts leave the shuttle landing facility runway for the astronauts must remain reclined until this medical data can be collected while they are in the crew transport vehicle and through their return to the medical facilities at the astronaut quarters, which is located in the operations and checkout building about five miles south of the shuttle landing facility. So we expect to see only Commander Rick Husband, Pilot Willie McCool, and Flight Engineer Dr. Kalpana Chavla leave the crew transport vehicle and do the traditional walk around of the space shuttle orbiter. Because of the numerous life sciences experiments and test samples that must be removed from Columbia and the space hab while it's still on the runway, the start of the operation to tow Columbia to its hangar will not begin until very late this afternoon. Once back at the astronaut quarters, all of the crew will undergo thorough physical examinations then have lunch and see their immediate family members, and they currently plan to go home to Houston on Sunday. Columbia's next mission is STS-118 in mid-November, planned to deliver the S-5 truss segment to the International Space Station, and the six-member crew will include NASA educator astronaut Barbara Morgan. Visibility continuing to improve as we move toward our projected 9.16 a.m 
landing time. And all convoy vehicles are in position, ready to support the touchdown and rollout. From the shuttle landing facility, this is the Kennedy Space Center Ground Operations Control Center. This is Mission Control, Houston, Columbia. Altitude is now 90 miles above the Pacific Ocean to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. About uh, two minutes away from entering Earth's atmosphere. All activities continue to go smoothly en route toward a touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Columbia is currently targeted toward the runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, the runway selection continues to be discussed here in Mission Control, however, but uh, for its approach to runway 33, Columbia would perform a right overhead turn to align with the runway of about 214 degrees around the heading alignment cylinder, an imaginary cylinder created by the microwave landing system for the shuttle that uh, assists in guiding it to for its final approach. Columbia's altitude now 71 statute miles as it uh, enters Earth's atmosphere above the Pacific Ocean en route to, to the Kennedy Space Center. Its speed uh, 17,000 miles per hour. Columbia with wings level and Nose angled up about 40 degrees to control heating as it descends into the atmosphere. Its altitude now 68 miles. As uh, Columbia descends into the atmosphere and approaches the continental United States, it will perform the first in a series of four banks 
it performs as it approaches the Kennedy Space Center. That first bank to the right, then back to the left, then back to the right, and then a final bank to the left as it approaches Kennedy and the shuttle landing facility runway. Those designed to dissipate speed for the shuttle as it descends into the atmosphere toward landing. Just under 30 minutes to touchdown for Columbia now. Altitude 64 miles. Columbia's course toward Florida will take it across the continental United States, crossing the California coast above the San Francisco Bay Area and continuing across Sacramento, California, providing a uh, spectacular view for persons in that area of Columbia's descent through the atmosphere. That uh, observation of the shuttle would begin about 5.51 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, and continue for about four minutes till 5.55 a.m. Pacific Time with the shuttle at an elevation of about 78 degrees. It'll be visible as well through much of the United States Southwest above uh, southern Nevada and uh, northern Arizona and uh, central New Mexico as it continues its descent through the atmosphere uh, trailing a plasma trail uh, left as it heats the atmosphere around it uh, during its descent. Columbia's altitude now 54 miles as it continues to descend into the atmosphere wings level nose angled up 40 degrees to control heating Columbia is traveling about 17,000 miles per hour. Columbia's altitude, 48 statute miles as it begins the first in a series of four banks to dissipate speed as it uh, descends into the atmosphere. Banking to the right now, a steep bank of 60 degrees and approaching uh, the west coast of the United States. Columbia speed, 16,620 miles per hour. Range to touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center runway, 3,450 statute miles.
Columbia in almost an 80 degree bank to the right uh, to dissipate speed. The first of four banks it performs as it uh, approaches Florida to slow down as it descends. Altitude now 47 miles or about 248,000 feet. The shuttle speed is 16,400 miles per hour. Aboard the shuttle on the flight deck are Commander Rick Husband and Pilot Willie McCool, Flight Engineer Kapana Chavla, and uh, Mission Specialist Laurel Clark. On the lower deck of the shuttle for entry are Payload Commander Mike Anderson, Mission Specialist David Brown, and Payload Specialist from the Israel Space Agency, Alon Ramon. Columbia approaching uh, the coast of California now. It'll, it's predicted to cross the coast and be visible in the San Francisco area about 5.51 a.m. Central Time, or Pacific Standard Time, rather. And uh, almost uh, directly over, pass almost directly overhead of Sacramento, California. It actually crosses the California coast uh, just to the north of the San Francisco area. Columbia is on target for runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center Shuttle Landing Facility runway. Uh, subject of runway selection has been discussed and mission control continues to be discussed some, but uh, in the meanwhile at present, uh, the original targeting for Columbia is toward runway 33. And as it approaches runway 33, it would perform a right overhead 212 degree turn to align with that runway around the heading alignment cylinder. An imaginary cylinder created by the microwave scan beam landing system at the shuttle runway that assists in the shuttle's guidance toward its final approach to the runway. Shuttle's altitude now 45 miles, speed 15,800 miles per hour, continuing in a right bank with wings angled 70 degrees, the first of four banks it performs to dissipate speed as it approaches landing. Columbia crossing uh, the California coast, again, uh, just to the north of the San Francisco area. Its course will take it across uh, Sacramento, California. Columbia continuing in a right bank, a wings angled 43 degrees. Speed 15,000 miles per hour. Altitude 43 miles. 2,090 miles to touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center. Targeted for runway 33 at Kennedy at present. 
crossing uh, the continental United States and now uh, crossing above southern Nevada to the north of Las Vegas. Columbia's course continuing across Arizona and at the Arizona-New Mexico border near the Four Corners area of the United States. This course will take it almost directly above Albuquerque, New Mexico. Its altitude now 225,000 feet or 42 miles. Speed 14,300 miles per hour. 1,785 miles to touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center. It's banking now back to the left, the second in a series of four banks that dissipate speed of the spacecraft as it uh, becomes an aircraft and descends into the atmosphere toward Florida. Wings angled about uh, 75 degrees to the left. Columbia continuing uh, toward Florida, now approaching the New Mexico-Texas border, altitude 40 miles, speed 13,200 miles per hour, range to touchdown 1,400 miles. The shuttle in the left bank with wings angled about uh, 57 degrees to horizontal. In Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure messages and we did not copy your last. Roger. Uh,
Columbia out of communications at present uh, with Mission Control as it continues its uh, course toward Florida. Fourteen minutes to touchdown for Columbia at the Kennedy Space Center. Flight controllers are continuing to stand by to regain communications with the spacecraft. Houston, com check. Columbia, Houston, UHF, com check. Capcom, uh, Charlie Hobaugh calling uh, Columbia on UHF frequency as it approaches uh, the Merritt Island tracking station range in Florida. Twelve and a half minutes to touch down according to uh, clocks in mission control. Columbia, Houston, UHF com check. Columbia, Houston, UHF com check. Flight controllers are standing by for Columbia to move within communications range of the Merritt Island tracking station in Florida. To regain communications uh, with Columbia. Also, a uh, flight controller standing by for tracking data of Columbia that also received through the Merritt Island Columbia tracking station. Houston, UHF com check. Ten and a half minutes to anticipate a touchdown uh, for Columbia.
flight controllers are still standing by for C-band tracking data from the Merritt Island Tracking Station of Columbia and uh, UHF Communications. Columbia, Houston, UHF comm check. Eight minutes uh, on the touchdown clock for Columbia. Flight controllers continuing to stand by to regain communications with the spacecraft. Flight controllers standing by uh, for communications through the Merritt Island Tracking Station, a ground tracking site in Florida. This is Mission Control Houston. Flight controllers are continuing to seek tracking data of Columbia. Touchdown clocks uh, count down to six minutes to touchdown for the anticipated shutdown touchdown of Columbia at the, the Kennedy Space Center runway. Tracking data is being sought through the Merritt Island tracking station located uh, near the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Communications uh, with Columbia were lost at about 8 a.m. Central Time, about uh, 10, 10 minutes ago.
This is Mission Control Houston. Flight controllers are continuing to stand by for communications from Columbia. The last communications with the spacecraft occurred about 8 a.m. Central Time as it uh, was above Central Texas, currently uh, seeking communications or tracking data from the spacecraft through C-band radar and ground tracking sites located at the Merritt Island Tracking Station in Florida. This is Mission Control Houston. Flight controllers continue to seek tracking or communications uh, with the uh, Columbia through Merritt Island Tracking Station. Last communications uh, with Columbia was at 8 a.m. Central Time, approximately above Texas, as it approached the Kennedy Space Center uh, for its landing. Flight Director Leroy Kane is now instructing controllers to uh, get out their contingency procedures and uh, begin to follow those. Flight Dynamics Officer reports uh, no tracking data from the uh, C-band radar at the Merritt Island Tracking Station has been reported of uh, any objects.
This is Mission Control Houston. Flight Director Leroy Kane is instructing our controllers to follow contingency procedures. The last communications with the Shuttle Columbia during its descent from orbit were at about 8 a.m. Central Time as it uh, was descending through the atmosphere. At an altitude of about 207,000 feet en route to the Kennedy Space Center, Florida, and a touchdown that uh, was anticipated to occur about two and a half minutes ago. Flight controllers received uh, no further communications with the spacecraft after about 8 a.m. Central Time, and uh, no further tracking data from the spacecraft uh, was gained from C band tracking radar at the Merritt Island Tracking Station in Florida. Contingency procedures in effect in uh, mission control require all operators to uh, conserve all their data and uh, log books and notes that have been taken that uh, being instructed by Flight Director Leroy Kane for controllers to begin uh, following those steps and secure all information. Again, uh, Flight Director Leroy Kane has declared a contingency. Flight controllers here in Mission Control are securing all their information, notes, and data gathered from the spacecraft. The last communications with Columbia at 8 a.m. Central Time as it was descending toward Florida for its landing. At that time, about 207,000 feet above Central Texas, traveling approximately 12,500 miles per hour, 1,192 miles from its touchdown at Kennedy Space Center. Since 8 a.m., uh, no communications were received with Columbia uh, and no tracking data received uh, through the Merritt Island tracking station. Uh, those uh, efforts made, the flight dynamics officer reports uh, no objects tracked through that uh, tracking data.